Hello everyone, welcome back. To, we're going to do a quick video here. I just want to explain some stuff then um, that I've had a little bit of questions on on the previous Concorde tutorial. So we're here in, as I said, in the uh, British Airways uh, Concorde and uh, we're flying the Collie Martyr Concorde today. So this is the one for X-Plane 11. I personally think it's one of the best Concords available on the market for simulators uh, and it's the only one available in X-Plane 11. We're here down in stand 421 at uh, Heathrow Airport and we're going to be flying today uh, across to Shannon uh, whilst I show you guys a couple of INS tutorials things that I just wanted to go over so that everyone's familiar with how the INS works so that you guys can fly to any destination you feel like you want to fly to yourselves. So, quick run over, then we're going to have a little look at the INS programming and alignment stuff. Then we're going to have a little look at how you can find out your INS coordinates from Simbrief uh, so that you can fly to wherever you want to. Auto throttle tutorial, we're going to have a quick run through that, see how that works. And we're going to have a little look at VOR navigation and how that looks. And then we're going to have a look at activating the INS and some altitude management. So stick with me whilst we run through that. Brilliant. Right, hello then. We are in the flight deck of Concorde and... Um, just before departure here then, uh, I've got I've done some basic turning on of these systems. So we've got the batteries on, oxygen stuff is on, and the air data computer's on. But I haven't set my INS running. So, we have a little look at our INS computer then. This is the one here. In Concorde V2 now, this fully is fully operational and works really, really well, I find. So in the uh, old, with the Steva INS, we had to put in our position. Which if we scroll to position here, we can see we've got 5127.6. Now if I just flip across to Navigraph, which if I bring up so that you guys can see it too, show you guys quickly there, bear with me, sorry, I <laughs> always got to slow this, there we go, there's Navigraph there. So our coordinates should match what we find on Navigraph, so if we go to Heathrow Airport here, and go Taxi Charts, and go to Parking Stands and Coordinates we're going to be looking for, Parking Stand Coords. We know we're on the 400s. Has it got the 400s there? Might need the next ones. There we go. So we're on stand 421. So 421, 51276. Oh, well, you know, it's exactly the same. So here we're very fortunate that in Concord, and they've been very kind to us this time around, and um, the position in Concord will always be the exact position it is at. So we don't have to actually worry about reprogramming this as we would normally. So because the position is in, I can hop back into the engineering station, look down, and on board Concorde we have three INS systems, one, two, three, two, and three. And what we want to do is set them all to standby, give them 30 seconds or so to sort themselves out. And once they've done that, going through a line, a line, a line. We get the whites flashing, showing us that they are aligning. Your white lights will only flash if you are on um, visual presets high or above. If you're below that, um, you won't unfortunately see the uh, the white lights flashing, so you might want to turn yours up if you can. I know I couldn't for a while there, so if you can, turn them up so you can see the white lights flashing. Anyway, we're going to be looking for solid green light once they've finished aligning, after about 10 minutes or so. Um, and once they've finished that, we can crack on with the rest of it. Although... Cut that bit out. So, as these continue to align, once they've finished aligning, um, we'll be able to set them to the position of nav, which we'll do in a minute. But whilst they're aligning, we can hop back into our flight deck position and have a look down at our NS and get going with the programming of the waypoints. So, to do this, we're going to switch the dial here to waypoint. And we can see we've got this rolling that rolls up to nine, just like that. But how does that work? Well, we, need, we often have more than nine waypoints, so how does that work? Well, if I drag up this, I'll be able to show you. So, if you can believe it, because we only have nine on this old-fashioned INS system, <laughs> as good as it is, it only has nine. But I like to think of them as a circle. So the plane will follow. It will go from zero. Initially, it will go from zero to one. This is my drawing, by the way. <laughs> so from zero to one, that's what the plane will fly initially. Then it'll go from one to two, then from two to three, three to four, and so on, all the way around until it gets to waypoint nine. Now when it gets to waypoint 9, it assumes it's the end of the flight plan. But actually, what we'll do later, and you'll see, is we can hit waypoint change and tell it to go from 9 to 1, and we continue on round the circle. And so I think of these waypoints in 1 to 9 as a sort of circle that you can keep going around. So of course we then reprogram at 1 as actually being waypoint 10. 
and two would actually be reprint 11 and so on and so forth and so from there we'd be able to continue on our flight but that's how I like to think of of, uh, of these waypoints as, as something we, we run through right superb then so what we can do then is start to program in our waypoints now normally for the uh, for the flagship routes such as Heathrow to JFK and Heathrow to Barbados I've got these waypoints written down on a piece of paper but in our case for today flying to Shannon which they do for training flights but today we've got some people and we're going to be taking around the bay on a little supersonic experience but normally we would uh, of course just find these off from Discord so if we I head on to our Discord server for the Pillar Pilot 1 at least if I show you this guys here on our Discord server then if we head on to Pillar Pilot and have a scroll down and we can see we've got these different announcement charts this Concord route information which if I scroll to the top you'll see we posted this big uh, route we've got the call sign used, the distance of the route, the subsonic and deceleration points and the alternate airports and so on so because of this we wanted to show all the routes so you can see Heathrow to JFK you've got your raw route here so this in the case of if we were flying from Heathrow to JFK I can cop control C, copy that and drop it into Simbrief into this route, bam, and I put it in there. But in our case today, we don't have a Shannon one on this list. And if you two are trying to fly Concorde, like to Innsbruck, for example, or somewhere more exotic like that, you two will be in this position that we were in. So to do this, you go on to Simbrief, which we can do quite easily. If I drag it up here, there we are, there's Simbrief. Today I'm going to be flying from Heathrow to Shannon, so I've inputted the two there of course it's given me a bad route I created one on Navigraph because I wanted to change it and you can see that this route takes us out around the bay so that we can break the sound barrier give people a little experience and then start our descent back into Shannon so that's all well and good but the question is then how do we find out what the coordinates are for these waypoints so for today if we generate it of course there's no Concorde so I've just put in whichever aircraft it is but if we generate the flight plan there for us Takes a little bit of a second there. Right, flight plan generated there. So, I've generated this little flight plan here, and I can see scrolling down here that I've got my uh, OFP, the, the flight plan there, all the the night routes, the fuel I'd need if I was flying the A340. Because we're flying Concorde, we don't need them. What we do need these routes, but I have left it on EasyJet layout. So, if I change that to Lido and regenerate the flight plan again, should be much quicker because it's already done it. But once we regenerate that flight plan, we should see. There we go. If we scroll back down to flight plan, it looks different. Now, if you scroll down through a couple of pages, you'll find here we are. We've got the flight log. Now, this is all the routing and the waypoints we'll need. So it's got the Compton 3 Golf departure, which we're taking up to Compton. And then it's got Malby, Kessup, Merrill, Leslie, Shannon FIR. And we're just looking for the waypoint Southern, Dollop, Lupor. Uh, Eknis, Tobri, Derag into the airport of Shannon. So we can look on here and we can see that the main waypoints we're going to have are Compton, Malby, Kessup, Merrill, Leslie, Southern, Dollop, Lupor, Eknis, round onto our finals. And then next to them here we have the north and the west. Now that may be south and east if you're flying in the southern hemisphere or and so on. But for today's flight, we've got these coordinates. So if we take our first waypoint for today, which we know to be Compton, there it is. It's also a VOR, which we'll be flying towards. But if we start it from there, we will get 1 to 2 to Malby. So we want to have Compton as our first waypoint if you're departing Heathrow, always. If you're going west, of course. If you're going east, then you'll be on a different departure, and you want to have the last waypoint on the SID as your final waypoint. So if we take this lovely Compton waypoint here, which we're being shown here on this, that the it is north 5129.5 west 00113.2 so we head in here number one we scroll this dial to the, the waypoint we want to program so I want to program one hit north bam like that and Compton is 5129.5 5129.5 and west 0011 it can be a little bit laggy so make sure you get it clicked 3.2 then I'm going to hit insert, and waypoint 1 is now inserted. You see these are all zeros. If I go to waypoint 1, there's Compton. 
Brilliant. So that's waypoint one programmed. From there, I'm just going to slowly program in the next couple of waypoints. So here for this one, our next waypoint then is Malby. So if we find it again, Malby, there it is. So it is this little bit here, sorry, north and west. They're the coordinates we're going to program in. So Malby, scrolling the dial to waypoint two now, is north, 5135.6. West zero zero two zero three point seven. That's Malby inserted. And our waypoint three is going to be Kessup, which will be our acceleration point. Five one one nine decimal five. And it's going to be West zero zero three three nine decimal three. That's Kessup. Waypoint four then today is going to be Merley. So it's north 5120.0, and it's going to be west 00500.0. Make sure you double check these waypoints because uh, these define where the aircraft is going to fly. And if they're slightly off, then you'll get a very, uh, very interesting flight plan um, as the aircraft will, of course, not fly the ones you think you programmed, but instead the one you did. So uh, make sure. When you're programming these, you just double check that you've got them all because um, it can go off and go wrong if not. And we don't want that. So we've done waypoint four then. Our next one is going to be waypoint five. So after one earlier, we've got Leslu. So we're coming up to Leslu here. It's just going to be north 5100.0 and west 00. zero checking myself there. 800.0. That's Leslie. From Leslie, we're flying to Subvan. 7, 3.6. North, 5125. West, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0. And we're point 7 then. Dollip is going to be north. Five two zero zero point zero west zero one two zero zero point zero and then waypoint eight there our next one is going to be Lupor when we're then going to enter the arrival so it'll be north five two three two five west zero zero just check, I think there's another zero. Zero, zero, nine, four, two. Nine, four, two, point one. And then after Lupor, we're going to program one more on the arrival, which is Eknis. So we're point nine. Fortunately, it's our final one, but that's fine. I'll show you how to do it if it's not. So actually, I'll program in another one in a bit just to show you how it works. Eknis then is five, two, five, four, three, west. Zero, zero, eight, five, five, seven. Fantastic, and that's our waypoints program in. It's as simple as that. It takes a bit of time to do, but once you've lobbed them all in, you can have a, a nice, fully complete INS. So we'll be running through in the next part uh, the VOR navigation, which we'll get on departure. But in the meantime, our INS have aligned. So at this point, I set them to nav, and our INS startup is now complete for this stage of flight. So, we've done our INS, now let's have a quick look at the autopilot system. So if we head over to it here, we can see on our glare shield in Concorde we have our autopilot system. This is the complete system we use for flying Concorde in the Colomata version, um, including the vertical speed which is down there. That's the only one that isn't on this glare shield that you need to worry about. So starting from left to right then, on the left we've got our nav navigation, so this is for the VORs. So Compton for example is 114.35 and you can see there it picks it up. So we've got this switch, which changes us from INS navigation to radio navigation, otherwise known as the VOR stuff. So if you're on radio, that is the nav, and INS uses the computers, which we programmed earlier. So we go to radio, you can see I've programmed in Compton. It tells us the distance to it, but don't be deceived. It is not pointing to where Compton is. This is the uh, little navigation display here, uh, which is kind of including the autopilot, so my bad earlier. Uh, 
It does, it's not pointing to where it is, you have to dial that in. So we'll cover that in a second. Continuing right on the autopilot then, we have our auto throttle system. Nicely divided there with these little lines on Concord to tell you the different systems. So, auto throttle system is separate here. So we've got this nice dial. We can dial in the speeds we want from there. And uh, dial in whatever speed you want uh, to achieve. And at that point, these are the two auto throttle systems. There's a left one and a right one. It won't let me activate them on the ground, unfortunately. But there's a left and a right. And uh, between these two, you can uh, select either one. Always go auto throttle one if you want. You can do both at the same time to be more accurate. Uh, but that's kind of how that works. Uh, we then have the different options. Mac hold, IAS hold, and IAS acquire. So if I want to do 250 knots, say, and I'm doing 200 knots, I will click IAS acquire. It will accelerate to 250. When it gets to 250, it will flick to IAS hold, uh, and it will hold the speed. If I was then at 250 and I wanted to increase to 300, I could dial this to 300 whilst it's in hold mode, click IAS acquire, and then it would accelerate. Whilst you're dialing this, it won't accelerate if it's in IAS hold mode. If it's in IAS acquire, as you're dialing this, it will keep trying to achieve whatever speed you dial, so be careful of that. Mac hold then, that, well that using our Mac dial, whichever Mac speed we're at currently, it'll attempt to maintain. You can be changing these systems, look, whilst auto throttles are not on, and then as soon as you flick these dials on, uh, it will engage. Continuing right then, we have our flight director switch here, which comes across, useful if you're flying uh, on the autopilot systems. We have our INS navigation, so if we wanted to fly using the INS, uh, which we can We'd flick this switch to show us where our INS is for us, and then we click INS and the aircraft will fly that. We have our back beam, so if we wanted to fly in the opposite direction to a VOR, some SIDs may require this, we could do so. Track heading, um, we can use to uh, head towards waypoints and VORs and things, uh, and then we have VOR lock, which is sort of the same thing as track heading, but slightly different. VOR lock you will be covering when we use the ILS later, and so we'll go over these two. Heading old then. Current heading we're at, we'll hold. Auto land. It's exactly as it says. It will uh, hold. Go around. Hit that on. And once you're going around, it'll fly a go around procedure. Pitch hold. As it says, landing is the same uh, sort of principle as auto land. Uh, and it will land the aircraft for you. The glide slope then we'll be covering because I'd like to land my planes manually. So I don't often use the landing systems. Glide slope is as it says, it'll just follow the glide slope. Used in tandem with VOR lock, you have your localizer and your glide slope for the ILS. Mac hold uh, will continue the aircraft in a climb if required or descent. Do hold the current max speed you're at. So it's not the same as the auto throttle systems where the throttle will be changed. If you have the throttle, say, holding you at 300 knots, and that equates to 0.5. 8.5 max speed and you click Mac hold to hold that with the throttles at the same with the thrust sorry coming out at the same percentage um, the aircraft will either climb or descend so that's uh, I don't often use that one uh, and then we'll cover max climb and it's the maximum climb rate it can do with that engine power max cruise is uh, for the later in the cruise when you're going between 50 and 60 thousand feet it's just a nice cruise climb IAS hold to hold the same speed it'll do whatever it needs to do but rather than it being Mac hold, it's IAS. Altitude hold uh, is the same. So the altitude acquire is the same sort of principle as the auto throttle. You click altitude acquire and dial this to whatever you want. And then you click vertical speed and the aircraft will climb with the vertical speed. Often when you're in the air and you click altitude acquire, it will automatically click on to vertical speed, which can be controlled using this up and down. We'll cover this all when we start going up earlier. Once it reaches, say, 17,000, it'll flick to altitude hold. Simple as that, and then we've got Flight Director 2. Along the bottom here, we've got our headings. So if I wanted to, for example, I've got Compton tuned up on the left here. If I wanted to fly direct to it, I dial this, and it, see how it dials that around. Changing this, if we change it so that the orange is then in line, and we have one straight line, that is where Compton is. So Compton is due west from Heathrow, which I can tell you it is. This is the heading then. This is a heading bug. Changes this little white arrow around on the navigation. If I want to fly to it, I pull it out and click track heading, and it will then fly towards that specific heading. So it's like if the controller tells you fly heading 330, you dial that 330, pull it out and click track heading, and the aircraft will fly towards it. We will be using that later, so we'll go over that. We're not on VATSIM today though, but uh, as a demonstration we'll be using that for capturing the ILS later. 
and then if you push it back in and click track heading it'll fly towards this one to capture the VOR and it's the same on the first officer's side. Brilliant! So that's a little overview of the uh, autopilot system which we'll be using in a bit. So I'm going to get the engines running and see you all when we're test taxiing out to the holding point 27 left. for Concord. Um, as I say, they're not the professional way to do them, but they are the way I find uh, is the way that is most realistic um, for what we do in Flight Simulator and the best way to do them, really. So if we hop back into our flight deck then, and we'll carry on with the rest of our startup, and I'll explain some of the VOR navigation we're going to use as we depart Heathrow. So, here again, navigating the complex web of taxiways here at Heathrow on our way out to 27 left. And bearing in mind, we're sat so far ahead in Concord. Um, we are. It's quite quite scary going around the corners. As you often hang over to the grass. So, the aircraft's ready to go. The only thing we haven't got ready to go is the autopilot. So if we get up Navigraph then, which I, I use personally for my chart, although there are other options available, I am no way endorsed by Navigraph. I just recommend it highly. If you'd like to use other versions, such as uh, ChartFox, it's very, very good, uh, or even other... Uh, versions again are very good uh, replacements for it so do check them out too right here we are then uh, just approaching 27 left I'm just going to bring the aircraft to a quick stop there quite a sudden stop if I'm honest and here we are you can see on my screen then bringing up here Navigraph it's telling me it's unsupported it's just it's sorting itself out right there we go so if we head over to Heathrow then on the left and head to our SID we're going to be on the Compton 3 Golf Departure this is the one Concorde will always fly, but uh, especially for us. So if we pull it up here, we can see we've got some several VORs along our route today, which we're going to be running. Oh, I thought I ah, must have released the parking brake by mistake. Right, so if we bring up the Navigraph chaps again. <laughs> there we go. We can see we've got these several departures we're going to be flying. So initially, we're going to be going from 27 left, flying the direct heading of the runway, which is, if we have a look at the other charts, we can bring up taxi charts here and airport charts it's oh it's overlaid it my bad you can see on the airport charts the heading for 27 left is 269 so we're just going to try and maintain that on departure but if we head back to our chart for here for departure on heading 269 the London radial is a VOR um, just north of Heathrow so we're going to be flying uh, away from it, and in this case here, we weren't given the inbound heading. If we were given the inbound heading, we'd use back beam, but because we're given 256, we can actually put in 256 away as the course from as the course as if we were heading towards it, but for away from it, um, from the London VOR, and we will essentially fly. If I click track heading on the autopilot, we'll fly away from it on that heading to maintain uh, in line with it, if that makes sense, towards the 7 DME, which is seven miles away. Um, from that VOR, at which point, using the next set, we will turn right heading 268. Now that's going to be using, if I show you on here, that's going to be using the black dial. We're going to dial that to 268. And at 268, we're going to pull it and click track heading. And then we're just going to fly on that heading. We're not even going to be heading towards the VOR, just on that heading. So, the first waypoints we're going to want then is that London one on 1336. And we're going to want 256. So this white one, you can see it's turning around the orange dial here. Set it to 256, and it's going to be track heading with that pushed in. If it's pulled out, we'd be using that pushed in. If I head, bring back up Navigraph, we can see we then head to the Woodley. Um, you, I don't use, I won't be using the Woodley ADF uh, as it doesn't quite work fully in Concord at the moment uh, in terms of distance and everything. So for navigation, they're quite difficult to use. But anyway, what I'd like to do is know that at 13 DME from Compton, which is 11435, so whilst we're on this heading 268, we're going to be changing over to Compton, because we're just on the heading, we don't need any VORs at this point. We'll change to Compton, dial up the heading of 281, and when we hit 13, we'll click VOR lock and fly straight towards Compton. And that's how we're going to be using the VORs for the SID on our departure today. So, let's get ourselves rocking and rolling. So, we'll set... 250 knots, as that's our first speed we're going to be looking for. Our altitude today on the SID is 6,000, and we're going to climb via vertical speed of about 2,000 feet per minute, as we're quite light in Concord today. I've set our VR, VR speeds, and we're all ready to go. 
On the first officer's side, I'm going to dial up the heading of 281 to remind myself once we're airborne. It won't actually use this, but 281 is the heading we're going to be flying towards Compton on 114.35. This is so I have an idea of what we're doing once we're airborne. So if we release our parking brake, I'm going to close the Abbey tab down there, as I prefer to use the Navigraph, just personal preference. Throttle up a bit and get ourselves lined up on the runway. I've got the landing lights and turn-off lights on today, just as it's a little bit dark out of Heathrow. Our departure then, pretty simple, standard as always with the afterburners today. We're just going to be jetting off from the runway, and immediately I'm going to be engaging, as soon as we kill the, uh, the afterburners, I'm going to be engaging the auto throttle. So, we'll go through that as it happens. Brilliant. So, coming on to 27 on the left there. Looking left, just make sure we're clear. A little bit less speed around the corner. And we'll get a nice lining up on the runway there. Brilliant. Now we're on the runway we will get ready to go. So if we just stop here. So line up on the runway then. We'll do a quick flight control check. We should have done that earlier really, but we're just doing sort of a bit of VO1 navigation for today. We're all ready to go. We'd be given clearance. Three, two, one. Now let's get rolling. Burners are armed, so we're ready to go. We'll get rolling. Quite a quick acceleration down the runway. Bit of stick pressure forward should help us there. 100 knots. Power set. Relinquish that pressure. V1. Rotate. Oh, PC is loading or something. There we go. Rotate. Trying to hold the nose nicely there. Positive rate gear up. Travelling. And pitching up there to get to about 2,000 feet per minute or so in the climb. There we go. We're airborne, lots of speed, so we don't really need it much. I'm going to kill the burners there, and here I'm going to throttle off a bit, and I'm going to set ICO quiet and auto throttle on for 250. We do this a little bit quicker normally so that we don't exceed the speed 250 so much, and then I have to pitch up the nose slightly just to hold it there at about 2000. But you can see there, it went from a choir at 250 to holding as it reaches 250. I've got the heading then at 268, but we can set it to 269, and we're going to fly that away from the runway until we capture that VOR from London. A lot of stick movement there, it's a little bit windy coming out for you The Oswald system there, trying to hold us around there. I then completely let go of my throttles at home, and they are just flying themselves. Lovely. So, coming out of Heathrow then. I'll bring this over so you can see here. We're flying away from Compton. About to intercept this radial and head along. It is the plan. Oh, well, I didn't show you, did I? Bring it up here. There we go, we're intercepting that radial there, and then. So we'll start to roll left, 256. A bit of a steep turn, my bad. There we go, there's Compton there. So if I can bring it up on the Abbey tab, that makes things a bit There we go, that makes things more clear now. So now we're flying away from uh, the London VOR, and quickly we're going to be turning right again at 7 DME point from it. Uh, as coming out of 27 left especially, there's not much. I'm going to re-pitch up the nose there just to make sure I'm holding. I can see the plane's coming across onto that point. So we're going to make our right-hand turn 268 at the 7 DME. There goes 7 DME. So now if I dial 269 or 268 and track heading, to demonstrate the autopilot, if I click the altitude on as well, and the flight directors on, you can see it'll now track. So what I've done, 268 I dialed up, I pulled it out to set it as the selected primary one over the other one. And I click track heading, and now the aircraft will fly on that heading as if we were being vectored by this heading here. On the altitude then, I clicked altitude choir, 6000, and it automatically came onto the vertical speed, which I can control by dialing this up and down. So now we're flying towards uh, the Woodley VADF.
which we haven't even tuned. We've just done it through headings. So coming up then, we're going to Compton. So if we dial up Compton, then 11435, and we're going to be on the 281. So now, because we're heading inbound to Compton, we can dial 281 on this, as we're not using it primarily. And when the line here, the direction, comes inbound and it gets to the centre, we should be at 13 DME from Compton. You can see we're closing here. This is our direction, this is our miles, sorry, from Nav 1. The aircraft there, 6,000, it's gone to altitude hold mode. Uh, interesting demonstration there, it's working nicely. And we're then approaching the 13 for Compton, where we will then hit VOR lock as we're heading inbound. Because we're heading away from uh, London, we didn't want to hit VOR lock, because that would do us 180 degrees. Because we're heading inbound to Compton, we can. I'm going to turn off the takeoff monitor at the same time. And uh, turn the engine rating to normal. Good. That's about the only bits of involved we have to do. We'll turn off some lights as well. So, here comes that radial coming across. We're ready for the 13 DME, and we're going to hit VOR lock at this point, and we're going to push this in at the same time. We hit VOR lock then, and push that in. It'll now fly towards Compton. And that's because we dialed that up on those headings. Brilliant. And at the same time, because we're in altitude hold mode, look, I can adjust the altitude and nothing will happen. But at this point, I'd like to climb up to flight level 280 as that's going to be our intermediate cruise for today. Click altitude acquire, and it will automatically flip into vertical speed, of which 2000 is about right. And we get the flight engineer to tune himself for flight. As he does so, I'm happy to bring up the initial set, so we're going to bring up just the nose. And there we go, as he climbs to 6000, we'll set our QH uh, to normal. But you can see in terms of navigation, we're heading towards Compton and we've got the auto throttle. So to demonstrate the auto throttle features then, if we want to get high speed, say 300 knots, I can dial 300 and nothing will happen. That's because it's in altitude IAS hold mode, sorry. It's going to hold the speed we're currently at, which is 249. If I now click IC acquire, IAS acquire, boom, it throttles up and now it's trying to get to 300 knots. At which point, when it gets there, it will flick automatically into IAS hold. So that's a little bit of the departure stuff for Concorde's uh, VOR navigation. As we pass through the VORs then, cut, cut out as we part through VORs. So here we are back then, as we were just a minute ago. But now we're looking at the INS bit. So once we pass through Compton, we know that's our first waypoint. We're going to be heading there in five miles. That's our first waypoint. From there, we want to be heading towards our second waypoint, which we programmed in the INS. So to do that, we're going to have to use our INS navigation. So we're just going to have a look at how to run that on the autopilot. Brilliant. So, two nine miles. For INS navigation in Concorde, things are relatively simple. We've got our INS button here, which we'll click, and we're going to flick this to INS. So we flick that to INS. We can see on our INS computer down here, it's got waypoints one to two. So this line, when you flip to INS, as it were, this directional uh, in at indication, is going to tell us the distance not only to waypoint two, but it's the line from waypoint one to waypoint two. So don't be fooled by that. We're still approaching Compton, so we'll leave it in now. We're just over Compton there, so I'm going to change to INS navigation. And I'll click my INS, and it's now going to fly me from waypoint 1, which was Compton, to waypoint 2 of Malby. Do the same thing on the first officer's side to make things easy. And through 10,000 then, I'm going to raise the visor. And now free speed as well. So again, demonstrating the throttle. Dialing 350, nothing happens. ICA or IAS acquire. It now will start to happen. Brilliant. And then if you want to change the vertical speed a little bit higher, simply dial that up a little bit more, and the nose will pitch up with the flight directors. The autopilot still works without the flight directors on. It's not like any other... S the flight directors are just an indication to the pilot as to what the plane's trying to do. However, without them, the aircraft will still do everything it needs to, uh, regardless. So the INS navigation, then, we're flying from 1 to 2. 
when we reach Malby in 26 miles this will change to 2 to 3 and it will continue on through our waypoints as we proceed out towards our acceleration then as I speak it's just flipped to altitude hold mode and the aircraft now leveling off at 28,000 feet which I selected there because it's an altitude hold we can dial up our next one ready for our supersonic acceleration uh, which given our fuel state is a bit crazy but uh, well, we'll go for it as we've got some passengers on board and they want, they want to f experience what uh, flying at twice the speed of sound is so I'm going to dial up 50,000 feet then initially on my aircraft 50,000 feet there set up and dialed now that's dialed up um, we can wait and you can see that the aircraft will just still try and level at 28,000 which is what it has flicked to altitude hold mode in if I was to click that off and re-click it now it will try and get to 50,000 feet but because the altitude hold, sorry, if I was to click that off um, it would not try and climb to 50,000 feet, it will level at what we are now altitude hold mode does whatever you're currently at if I was to click altitude quiet it would then go as per the vertical speed which I've got binded to a button on my uh, TCA Boeing yoke I'd recommend doing the same if you've got two of those little hats which is set it to the vertical speed because you'll be adjusting it lots and it's easier just to set it to a key. So we're still 51 miles away from our next waypoint on the INS computer. If you want to cheat slightly, which I'll just show you, if you want to check how your INS is going, you can click open this little tablet thing on the right here and your INS programming will show up as the lines and the waypoints on this tablet. By increasing the range, it does slow down slightly and it goes a little bit funny. There you go. But by doing this, we can actually see our run out and around that I've got programmed today. You can see we're going out down south of Ireland, uh, experiencing supersonic, which will, will probably get up to just below 50,000 feet or just above it slightly. Show you guys how that works, and then from there we'll carry on back into Ireland. So that's a little cheat method if you want to sh see how everything's going for you. I'll catch up with you all again at Kessup Our Acceleration. So here we are then, five miles from uh, Kessup Our Acceleration Point. And at this point then, I'm going to disable the auto throttle. Now, not moving my hardware here, the throttle will remain at what it was previously. And now we're at 384 knots, which is just uh, 0.95 at this altitude. 50,000 we set earlier then. All we're going to do is click altitude quiet and max climb when we get there. So max climb will uh, climb the altitude aircraft, uh, maintaining the speed uh, uh, as it as it does so. If that makes sense. So if we're pitching up, say 20 degrees, uh, so if I click altitude quiet, max climb there, and throttle up fully to full power. As we do so, the aircraft will begin to climb as much as it can with that much throttle. As we engage the afterburners there to break through Mach one we're doing so here we get the overspeed warning but the aircraft will really pitch up there we go with supersonic no bumps no bangs and that's concord but as the aircraft really pitches up here the idea is that the auto throttle so the uh, out all, uh the auto throttles off the um, the autopilot will continue to pitch up the nose of the aircraft to maintain the climb rate so that we don't overspeed it's struggling a little bit there because we're quite light so we're really galloping through uh, our speed but uh, the aircraft will really begin to pitch up here then to try and maintain um, just below that overspeed point. Brilliant, because we're on quite a short flight of course we're just going to be shooting up and then immediately sort of stopping our, our climb, uh, or not stopping our climb, trying to get as high as possible and then descending quite quickly but in terms of autopilot management here we've set 50,000 feet and it'll just leave it on max climb. You can leave it on max climb uh, as we approach Mach 1.7 and turn off the afterburners uh, as the aircraft will still climb on full dry power uh, as quickly as possible um, whilst uh, on that throttle setting. So because we've passed through Kessup we're now on waypoint 3 to 4 um, and it's, the INS is just rolling through the waste level of 9 waypoints we have there uh, to take us uh, on our little circle of waypoints. So we're coming up to Mac 1.3 in terms of flying there. This is a separate, as I said, go check out the other tutorials in the top right there. Still ramp starting to deploy. Um, but autopilot wise and navigation wise, um, 
we just look for that nice climb rate. We used to have to use the vertical speed, and we now like have to do that in, the, in V2. The max climb on those work very well. So the aircraft climbs nicely here. Yep, that's about it. We won't be engaged in the auto throttle for the rest of the uh, the cruise uh, Concorde. Um, we'll be doing it once we begin our descent again. We will then re-engage it. Uh, but in terms of auto throttle, you leave that off now. Uh, and we'll just be on full power um, on your hardware, or indeed scrolling. Um, we'll be at full power. The after those will go off at Mach 1.7, which we're rapidly approaching here because we're quite light. We're uh, able to I'm able to show you all of the uh, the procedures here, <laughs> and we're uh, approximately 23 miles there from Merley, which is 0.4. I think we'll probably hit 50,000 feet here. Uh, we're going very quick. Forty-three thousand feet again. Nothing we need to do here. But coming up to Mach 1.7. Noting the auto pilot changes that we're about to experience here as we start to turn off the auto throttle systems, there we, or the afterburner, sorry, there we go, outboards and inboards. The throttle remains at full power, but you'll see the nose pitches down there, again in max climb, to allow the aircraft to maintain speed and continually accelerate, um, but while still climbing as rapidly as possible. A very clever system devised by uh, Aeros Bastiel uh, in coalition with BAE. BAE, I believe, yeah, BAE systems uh, to to run to sort out that that system. They're quite advanced for its time, of course, uh, conceived during the 1950s and designed really during the 1960s uh, when uh, it was your piston aircraft still flying around. So pretty amazing. Um, fastest train at the time was a steam engine. Uh, I believe it was a West West Western Coast class. I think uh, was the fastest aircraft, uh, fastest train. So. Amazing that uh, they were devising systems like this at the time. Passing through waypoint 4 then, Merley, we continue on. The INS there just switching between waypoints. You might get a couple of turns, so in some cases it might turn. If you're turning in left, it might go right and then turn left. It's just the way the system works um, in uh, Kalimata's Concord. Fret not, it will eventually sort itself out. If you really want to, you can do a... If you think it's going to turn right when you should be turning left, do a heading hold. Wait for the wait to get a bit closer to the point, and then go back on INS. It should sort itself out again. But often, I just leave it on INS and all. Might do a little bit of wiggling, but it'll sort itself out eventually. So we selected 50,000 feet initially because at 50,000 we have to be Mach 2. Um, again, we've still got the autofrost systems off, but as the aircraft approaches this, we're going to switch to altitude hold. It'll do it automatically uh, on the aircraft autopilot systems. So here we are through 49,800. The vertical speed drops off as the aircraft anticipates the approaching uh, the desired altitude. So here we are then, 50,000, it goes to hold, INS navigation remains on, you saw that big change there, that's fine. So because it's in hold, we have through Mach 2 already, you see we're overspeeding slightly. I'm going to dial up 60,000 and click max climb, max cruise. When you do the max cruise, the max hold will come on, but without the auto throttle switch up, that won't be on. So don't worry about that. That's in anticipation of when you get to 60,000 feet. So there, I went 60. I did it quite quickly because uh, we start to overspeed. But 60,000 feet, altitude acquire, max cruise, max climb, um, and the aircraft now will do a cruise climb um, whilst maintaining speed above Mach 2. So you don't need to worry about that. But it's worth keeping an eye on it uh, as it's an old aircraft that so sometimes strays around from that. Uh, but through 50,000 then um, we leave it in the max climb, max cruise mode and once reaching 60,000 it'll switch to altitude hold mode and at this point we're still in INS navigation.
Right, hello again. Uh, we're just, after that end of the musical interview, interval, uh, we're just turning through uh, Waypoint 5 and on our way to Waypoint 6 now. Uh, that, of course, being uh, southern, um, so we're sort of making our diversion off the normal supersonic route and uh, onto the, uh, the special route we've got today, heading to Shannon. So our flight today, um, because of that, means we're approaching 5 to 6 quite quickly. So. Ever earlier we had that lovely little diagram of uh, the circles of waypoints. Now, um, because we go in a circle, we want to have to reprogram, but of course we don't want to reprogram when we get there. We want to have it preemptively done. So because we've passed through waypoints 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we're not using them anymore, they're not being used, they're not on the screen, so they're not being used, we can overlay them, as it were, as waypoint 10, 11, 12, and 13. So in our case today, Going back to our Simbrief flight plan, our final waypoint we programmed, waypoint 9, was 5254, which was Ecnis. So our next one, 5254.3, we want to program in as Tobri. So if I head to number 1, Tobri then, if I open up this side, bear with me, Tobri here, 5257.3, uh, west 00841.8. So on the flight sim then, we can head over to it and program that in, overlaying of course, we're not using it. So it's 5257.3 west 0085557. That's Tobri then, and then our f final one there, we will be vectoring ourselves, but that will be our only one uh, we need to do. If you had to do more, you could carry on, however do not do waypoint 5 as it's on the screen. When you then go from 6 to 7, you can then do 5. But if it's on the screen, you cannot use it. And if it's above, of course, so we don't want to be reprogramming waypoints 7, 8, and 9, because we're going to be going on to them in a minute. So we don't want to be reprogramming them uh, because of that circle of waypoints I was talking about earlier. Thank you. Okay, brilliant there. We've just hit 60,000 feet on our flight plan there. So uh, what I was just trying to show there is that because we've hit 60,000, uh, the aircraft has switched to altitude hold mode, and we are still in INS navigation, but now we're at Mach 0.2. We engaged the throttle, so I just engaged it and selected Mach hold, and now it's back on auto throttle now, so if I move my hardware, moving it there, nothing's happening because it's on auto throttle now, trying to hold Mach 2.02. The auto, the auto uh, throttle Mac hold system is a little bit wobbly, uh, so expect it to maybe, if you engage at 2.02, it might hold 2.04 and then back down, but then it might not at the same time. So it's a very confusing system, so you have to find what works best for you. I often find that engaging it 2.02 means I'm now doing 2.04 and getting quite quick. So that's sort of it. Uh, and there's a couple of other bits we do when going to engage crews and uh, flight, but that is, uh, if you want to learn more about that, head over to the other tutorial, this is just a little INS navigation. Hello all. We are just coming up to prepare for our descent then, so what I'm going to do here, start to dial in a bit of a descent here at uh, 2500, because we're in all Mac hold, I can dial the uh, auto throttle, and our descent then, we're going to turn off the auto throttle, so if I turn off there, and uh, if we select the altitude to our initial descent point, which will be about uh, 10,000 feet, we can click altitude acquired vertical speed, and using our manual throttle then, we're going to throttle back to this arrow point here, just on the side there. That's the official descent marker, and at that point, using throttling back to there, um, we're going to be looking for 350 knots to acquire, using the vertical speed corrections to control that. The plane's struggling to make a turn here because I'm descending uh, and going round, so we're sort of doing a big outward based turn here, but uh, that should correct itself um, at some point as we continue our turn round. So descending there, about 4,000 feet per minute, looking for the speed to be able to drop to 350 whilst we descend. In the meantime, the seatbelt signs can come back on and the engine rating goes back to climb. The heaters can come on as well as we continue our descent. So also pilot-wise, the vertical speed down to 10,000 is fine. When we start to approach 350 knots, I'll select Acquire initially, and then it will immediately flick onto holders. Hopefully it'll be around 350 when accurate, depending on how accurate I am as I engage it. But uh, that's the idea. As we do that, uh, the aircraft...
aft will hold 350 in the descent. Fantastic. Right, hello. Uh, we are just about to see some arrival information. I thought I'd let you know I've switched to heading hold as well here, um, just because the aircraft's getting a little bit confused as it was doing its INS stuff. We've deviated slightly from the route here, and it's just trying to sort itself out. So to give it a bit of a helping hand, I've gone for a slightly close, you can see sort of slicing the pie here, close to the uh, the uh, desired heading, um, so that when we activate INS, it will quickly turn back towards it. Uh, just giving it a bit of a helping hand now, that's all. I've increased our descent rate slightly there just by dialing that, um, just to allow ourselves to descend a little bit quicker. Your speed will start to increase, um, and if this is the case, you can always just start to throttle back a little bit. Although don't throttle back too much, because um, the aircraft, when we're at this altitude, the stall speed is very close, and so we want the speed to stay quite high for a while here. Right, so in terms of arrival information, if we open up our AVI tablet here, and head to our arrival, we can see we're on the Lusso 3 Delta today, or the Lepore 3 Delta. So from Lepore, which we're going to dial in here, we're going to be flying at a heading of 056. So that's just a heading based on no VOR navigation. So we'll be flying 056. So we can pull that out as that'll be our first heading. After 35 miles at Eknis, which we have got on INS, um, so we could we will fly um, this point these via INS. But what we want to be doing is flicking to nav every now and then to check that the INS is right for the arrival, as that's quite important to be getting right because. Of course, it's airspace restrictions and so on. So, I want to make sure we're getting right that right. The Shannon VOR then is 11.3. One, one Eknis is on a 356 radial from that at 11.2 DME. So, when we pass the 11.2 DME and the line comes to the middle, indicating we are on this line directly away from it, we'll know that we're passing over Eknis. Same again for Tobri, so we want to be checking that as we pass these waypoints. From there we'll be on manual turning and we'll vector ourselves onto the ILS, which is 1110.95. So we'll put that on the first officer's side, so that he can have that there um, on his side and check he is all happy with all of this. So we'll put that onto his side on 1105.95, and of course it's going to be 237 for his ILS. So we dial up 237 there. Um, to the ILS, and we'll be using that. That's just a reference so that I can then, rather than have to bring up this, I just look on his side, see what he's got, and we'll bring that across. We'll just put it on our side from there. We can see marked on here then, Darag is there, so by turning in, we want to make sure we don't cut the pie too quickly, cut the corner, um, as the ILS glide slope begins there, uh, uh, begins at, uh, as it could begin, begins at Ross Row, so we don't want to be too low. And we're looking to be at 3,000 at that point. So we'll continue our descent. We're quite high, but Concord can always descend very quickly if you need it to. So there's no real worries in that. So as we continue our descent down then, um, I'm just adjusting the throttle. Still not on auto throttle at this point, um, as I'm just bringing it down um, to ensure that we're getting a nice descent rate. You can see I'm still on heading hold, just because the heading is not coming in um, quite yet, and the air aircraft's getting a little bit confused. So what I'm going to do is, yes we dialed in at 056, what I'm going to do is just go due east on the heading here as that track heading, look, with that pulled out. Just to sort of make that corner a little bit more gentle. When the aircraft's descending and trying to turn turn at the same time, because of course we're rather than pulling up into the corner, like sort of pulling that way, we're pushing that way. So it's making it quite difficult for the aircraft to turn properly. There we go, we've just actually shot past it, so if I engage INS navigation there, Wow, there's a little bit of slow reaction there, but I can redial up 056 and the aircraft there. Now we're seven miles away from Lupor, um, and it's going to retry get back, back onto the track. Coming through 39,000 feet, then we are quite high. As we check on our arrival information um, at Concord, we should be at flight level 80 eight or plus here. So we're very high, but Concord yet again has another trick up our sleeve. If we increase our descent rate here, Looks like we're descending now at 6,000 feet per minute, that is very, very steep. But you can throttle back now, because we're getting low. Once you're into the 30s of feet, you can throttle back and it not be so much of a problem. However, above that, you want to be cautious in terms of what you're doing um, with the with throttles, just because you don't want to get yourself into too much trouble. At this point, I'm going to ask the engineer to trim us for descent. Quite bright sun spot there, reflecting right on our instruments, making it... Uh, 
a little bit helpful. At this point then, because the speed is uh, dropping back, we don't need to. I was going to engage the reversers there, but it looks like we don't need to. Quite steep on the nose there, so trim for descent. The aircraft can pitch up slightly more uh, as we continue on our descent down. Hello then. So, you're back with me then. I just sort of skip a little bit of descent there. A bit dull. We're just going down here. We've dropped back into the subsonic realm of aircraft here, and we're descending through 26,000. So to demonstrate, during a descent, if you want to... Oh, look, the road speed slightly. So what I'm going to do is just deploy the reverser caps here. So if I hop outside, you can see the little buckets are deployed behind. The reversers aren't on. We've got no power running through, but the buckets are. It makes a massive d uh, descent increase. So really important for that, uh, for our flight. So at this point, um, once we're doing this, We've got the reverse caps out. The speed's slowing down to 350, and as it starts to approach 350, we'll undeploy the reverse caps. Dialing up the altitude, then I'm going to dial in the initial out, uh, ILS altitude, which is 3000. And to re-switch this, just re-engage altitude choir, click it twice, turn it off, and turn it back on again, and it will uh, re-pick up the new altitude you've, you've requested. Speed's there below 350. So I just bring back in the reverse caps by clicking there. Speed will automatically start to rise because we're descending very quickly at this point. And I'm just going to busy around the aircraft getting a couple of other bits going. I will be releasing a um, Collimata Concorde V2 uh, tutorial for landing so please do go have a watch of that and if you're watching slightly later it's already been released. Do go check that out if you want to have a little bit more detail as to what I'm doing here for the arrival. Pretty simple stuff that I'm not really doing much. I like to big it up, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's actually fairly easy. Once you get used to it. So, speed there, rising again. So, again, same thing as before. Just redeploy the reverse of buckets just to help us slow down. As we want to keep our descent rate because we're going quite quick. We're just passing through waypoint 9 there. So, what I'm going to do is do waypoint change. 9 to 1. Insert. And then waypoint change. And that's now cycling round through our waypoint. So if, we're, if you reach waypoint 9 and you want to go to waypoint 10, click 9 to 1, waypoint change, and it'll now fly to waypoint 1. Which in our case, because I've gone past it, it's going a bit crazy. So what I'm going to do is go manual heading. Let's go right. Coming through 13,000, so I'm going to keep slowing down to 250 knots now at this point. So dialing 250 there for the selected. Our minimums here is 300 feet, so I'm just going to dial it in for both the first officer and myself. Speed's coming back through 280, so I'm going to keep the reverse out. Now we're on heading mode here, so I'm just going to keep dialing the heading road, heading round, as if we head on to Avi tab and have a look here. On the approach one, we are just north of the ILS there, so we'll keep going. I'm just going to enter us into a little hole just to help reduce the speed a little bit here. So if we go into heading 120, we'll just do a little bit of holding north here just to lose a bit of altitude there. As I was keen for our passengers to see 60,000 feet before we descended back into Shannon. Well, the pilots will be undertaking some training, I believe. Reversers can come in as uh, we're down to 213 knots. That's all right there. And I'm going to start to reduce our descent rate there to about 4,000 feet. Turn right heading 130, as we're actually still a fair bit away from the RLS, so we're happy to rejoin it. So 130, and also swap and go on 250 knots, as now we're at a point where the speed is just continuing to drop back. So if we go to a quiet, it'll throttle up and get us to the speed we need to be at. Lovely, so, approach. Hello then, so, approaching. At this point, I'm going to trim the aircraft for landing as we're below uh, 10,000 feet. Now we're trimmed for landing, we can set our speeds for landing too by clicking on them there. We have our speeds in for landing. In terms of ILS, I'm just getting at the meter for Shannon here, but it looks like the Q&H is pretty similar to what it was in uh, Heathrow, sorry. So, ah, 1006, no, it's quite different. So if we dial it up, 1006 on the Q&H there. 2973 to be accurate. Brilliant, right, so that's now dialed up. On our AV tab then, we're just checking ILS-wise. We'll continue our right turn 
And we're going to bring up the ILS on our side now as we sort of shot around the arrivals with a little bit high. 110.95 then for our ILS being programmed up. And the heading is going to be 237. So we'll select 237. And we're now on radio navigation, not INS, so we can just flip to that. We're going to continue our right turn as if we were being vectored because, of course, we're not on uh, Vatsin, so we're just vectoring ourselves here at this point. And the aircraft is levelled off at 3,000 there, ready to capture the ILS. You can see there, we're coming onto it, so we'll close the ambi tap here. I'm going to start to lower the nose here. And the nose too. Visor and nose going down. We'll start to slow the aircraft to 220 knots. I see a choir again, 220, speed starts to back off. When this uh, nice line starts to come across, that shows that we're getting close to the centre of the ILS. This dial shows what you should be. So we're too far uh, off to one side, so it says go this way. You can see the line starting to come in there, so I'm going to dial the heading a little bit closer to 220. You can see there to slow that rate of incline. And I'm going to click VOR lock. Because in Concorde we don't have a localizer, as it were, we have a VOR capture. This is a VOR, the ILS, and in this case uh, the localizer is just a VOR, uh, and then the glide flip is separate. So there goes the VOR lock. You can see there that we're directly heading towards the runway there. I can actually see the lights in the distance there of the runway. And the aircraft's heading straight towards it. So that means that's worked. I'm just going to turn on the lights for landing. And make sure the aircraft is all ready to go. Looks like it is. So, autopilot's still on this point. The altitude is being held at 3,000. If we check our ILS again, we start our descent from 3,000 at Rossville, which is 9.4 miles away. So when we reach 9.4, we know we're going to begin to descend with the ILS. I'm going to slow the speed down now to 210 knots. Doing it so, because it was in hold, I dial it and then click ICA or acquire. It then slows down again and it will switch back to hold when we get there. The q and is almost set up and I'll be taking manual when we get a bit closer. The glide slope is indicated twice in this aircraft. It's integrated on the primary flight display here and it again shows where it is. So in this case we are below it so it shows what you should be in this case. So it says we should be higher to be on it. Of course as you get closer we're flying in a straight line across and it's coming in diagonal line. We'll soon pick it up and begin our descent with it. So that's now, you can see it's starting to move. It's repeated again down here. That's starting to move down and as it starts to come to this centre point here I will then activate glide. So once it's below that first dot, we will then activate glide. In another circumstance, I'm going to use clicking in this left-hand box, I'm going to dial a white bar we see here to 13 and a half degrees, which is the no exceed point for landing. That's in case the no, if, the, if we were to go higher than that, we would tail strike. That's coming below there now, so I'm going to select glide on the autopilot, and as it indicates, the aircraft will pitch to attain the glide slope for runway uh, 24 into Shannon. At this point, I'm now going to slow down to 200 knots, which is our VFE. We are 8 miles, so I'm going to lower the nose fully and reduce the gear. Or lower the gear, pump. The aircraft now flying fully on the glide slope and the localizer, and you can start to see that the actual radar indicator altitude is coming down now. We're on the flight directors. I've still got the flight directors on. To make things clearer for landing, I'm going to turn them off. Again, as I said earlier, you don't need the flight directors, of course, um, for the aircraft to still fly on the autopilot. The auto throttle automatically disengages at 200 feet. So it's worth in mind that's quite high, it's a lot higher than uh, on an Airbus aircraft. So if you've been used to flying Boeing or Airbus, it will disengage quite early on. So you need to make sure you're aware of that. I often take manual just before that so that I'm uh, comfortable with what's about to happen. Uh, and then it's, I'm now on manual. Again, I'm just checking my lights and everything. But the aircraft's on VOR lock and glide. If you wanted to do an auto land, you can click auto land and land the aircraft will then land automatically, we're one of the very first aircraft to be able to do that. However, if you're like me, and after a, a long crossing of the Atlantic, say for example, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to land the aircraft myself in this case. So today we'll be doing such that. I'm going to slow back again, 190 knots, it's still in acquire mode at that point, so a little bit dangerous there because of course it'll slow down to whatever I was doing, so if I made a mistake and went a bit low, it would of course still try to slow down that. 
I think we've got a bit of a tailwind landing here, so uh, that might be why it's struggling a little bit. I'm going to disengage the autopilot then. Manual control. At this point, I'm still just looking to ascertain a straight line and try and stay on the glide slope using a bit of manual trim to help with that. There we go, nicely there. It's got 190 knots there. Our touchdown speed is about 170, so I can slow down to 180, and I wouldn't recommend going below 180 on the autopilot system there, with the auto throttle, sorry. Uh, and as below that, the aircraft starts to get very sluggish on the handling and become a little bit dangerous, if anything, so I'd watch it below that. I'm going to disable the auto throttle systems there, and I now have manual throttle. Of course, your hardware will be set to a different position than the throttles in the aircraft were, so it's worth noting that when you disable the auto throttle, it will... Uh, remain where they were so as soon as you start moving yours you want to try and get them to a position where they were. I'm switching to the pappies there as I've dropped a little bit below the ILS. I'm a little bit low here on my approach, not my finest here but that's all right. I'm increasing the throttle a little bit there and I'm looking to not pitch above 13 and a half degrees on touchdown. Over the runway threshold I'm idling the throttle, speed coming back to 160, bit of a bounce there and then sticks fully forwards to help the nose come onto the ground. Reverse is deployed. Quite a hard landing. Don't kill me in the comments there, guys. <laughs> I'm doing my best. And sticks forwards there as the aircraft slows down. And in terms of our autopilot tutorials, we're now done. Below 100 knots, we can activate the brakes. And we'll start to bring the aircraft to a nice controlled stop in Shannon. It's never as bad as it looks. <laughs> so hopefully that touchdown rate wasn't so bad. Below 60 knots then, reverses can be deployed, and I'm going to make my way to the end of the runway to backtrack. Can't go a little bit wide there, and so it won't be able to quite a little bit long, so it won't be able to uh, turn around here. Bring the nose up there, and turn off the landing lights. Try and stick central on the runway as well, and I'll see you all as we approach the terminal.